Well, I was going to check in with Firebat and Saddle again to talk a little bit more about Silent Storm. He's gone up to a big lead in uh, both of his series so far. Do you think that's crucial for him to find victory against uh, BB Gun Gun in the finals? Or do you think it's going to come down to something different, Saddle? I think for, for Silent Storm, the big story of him being here is you guys, you guys talked about the perceived weakness of Control Warrior. And it's kind of a story of this tournament, a story that's been framed by Frozen strategy more than anyone, but other players have brought it to some degree. Silent Storm is kind of the guy that hasn't really struggled to pick up wins with his Control Warrior. And that's a huge part of the reason why he's here in the Grand Finals right now. So it's potentially a, a theme that can continue. If he can get through with that Warrior again, he's going to be in good shape. Yeah, one guy doesn't even bring Control, I mean, right. any Warrior at all. BB Gun Gun choosing not to bring Warrior. Do you have any comments on that in terms of how it influences this series overall maybe firebat do you have any opinions on that yeah my opinions on warrior and in general more so is just a grand scheme of things is warrior is often the target and we saw that happen a lot or it's the target of a ban and we've also been seeing that happen of a lot not too many decks function the same way warrior does so if you're bringing warrior to a tournament you can either expect it's going to get targeted or banned and that might be why we see silent storm having such success with Cthune warrior because it's just different than standard control warrior and also pavel who won the eu last call also with Cthune Warrior. So both of the two players, the only two players in the, the NA and EU last call bringing Cthune Warrior, both having um, inordinate amounts of success with it. So it, it's really great to see some sort of like slight variations in pretty standard decks being able to cause just huge differences in results compared to other players. And I think Silent Storm, thanks to his tech choices, is going to have no trouble getting a win with a Warrior. And it may even warrant a ban from BB Gun Gun. Wow. Well, one thing that both of these players have, I think, is maybe a little bit of an inability to transition from ladder play into tournament play. Silent Storm, I've seen him play in on big stage in the past, and he plays very quickly. And a lot of times he plays sort of instinctually, which is uh, indicative of someone who would be playing on the ladder. You know, you want to play quick games. You want to get those sort of reps in. But this is a tournament environment. This is a big environment. Does Silent Storm need to settle down, or do you think like trusting those instincts uh, is something that he should do, Dan? Well, I think uh, trusting your instincts on this stage is usually a product of how much practice you've put in. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that just goes a very long way in Hearthstone is that if you've put the time and you've recognized enough situations, it'll just start flowing. You'll start understanding this is exactly what you need to do. The time that's taken to process just to verify that you, your first instinct was correct. Usually players at this level, if you look at Firebat also, you can probably confirm it, is that you recognize the right play within the first five to 10 seconds of the turn. And then you spend the rest of the minute thinking, just making sure that you didn't miss anything and that you get the right sequencing down and you kind of repeat it over to yourself. Yourself. That's what these guys are going to go through, and I feel like the difference will all will, will end up being how they choose the bands and how their preparation and how their deck tech lines up, but also that they can follow through with that. The moment you start second guessing yourself is when you're in dangerous waters and you start thinking about these weird creative plays that don't end up working out, and you look silly because of it. Mm -hmm. But you know the audience doesn't trust you anymore as a, as a reliable player when you are. So my advice to both these guys is just stick to your instinct. Both of them have played tens of thousands of games of Hearthstone, as e maybe even this year alone. Trust your instinct and let the cars do the talking. All right, well, it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. It's prediction time, so we'll start all the way over on the far end. Firebat, who are you predicting to take that last spot at the World Championship? I think that BB Gun Gun is going to take the last spot at the World Championship based on the Zoo deck from Silent Storm struggling and getting kind of pinned out by the uh, aggressive secret hunter from uh, BB Gun Gun. All right, Saddle. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm kind of on board with that as well. I think the, the zoo is definitely a potential weakness for Silent Storm. It's probably going to have to come up favorably against either one of the, the mage or the druid from BB Gun Gun if it's going to get through, but I'm going to go for BB Gun Gun as well. Dan? All right, well, you guys know what my pick is going to be. Uh, I, I predicted BB Gun Gun from the very beginning, uh, along with Neo Billy. I thought they were going to meet in the finals. I did think that Neo Billy was going to take that finals, but now that he's no longer in the running, my, v my vote goes to Coach BB. Okay. Well, we had sort of a similar situation in <laughs> Europe where we had, I think, almost the same analysts, the same people on the desk, oh, man. and they all predicted RDU, and RDU ended up losing. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, make this pick because I'm going against that, but Bet I honestly think Silent Storm's going to take it. <laughs> I'm not, I, I picked RDU last time. I was, I, I was on the hype train. I, you know, Silent Storm has had a special place in my heart ever since uh, he tried to grab that that famous microphone oh, man. in his interview there. at uh, Legendary Se Series Season 1. And ever since then, every single time I've seen him in an event, I've rooted for him, and this is going to be no different. So I'm going to go ahead and predict Silent Storm. 
So it's three to one ag against me. I'll look really smart. Yeah. If you, Salazar ends up winning. Yeah. First time for everything. <laughs> it's it's the EV play, right? Like, you just look like a genius <laughs> yeah. if you get That's it right. right. Yeah. The odds yeah. are in your favor stacked if we bet against you. Yeah. I'm going to pick the slow horse. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, it's time to get into the finals. So, Saddle fire bet. Take it away. Thank you so much, TJ. 15 players have stamped their ticket to BlizzCon. There is one spot remaining. Eight of the finest from the Americas have wore it out through the entire year just to get through this point and played through one of the most stacked eight-man single elimination brackets you will ever see. And we are down to just two. The two names you see in front of you right now, BB, Gun Gun, and Silent Storm. And straight away, let's take a look at these bands. The Warrior has been banned out for Silent Storm, the Shaman goes down for BB Gun Gun. What do we make of these Firebat? Yeah, pretty predictable bands. It's kind of been what the, these two players have been banning throughout the tournament, and uh, it just makes a lot of sense. BB Gun Gun is just trying to situate, you know, his weakest deck at having the best opportunity, which is that Secret Hunter. So the Secret Hunter matches up very unfavorably against the Warrior, as well as some of his other decks. So right. he gets rid of that to try and increase the odds of his lowest performing deck to have the ability to get out. And then meanwhile, Silent Storm's taking the approach of... Uh, I just want to get rid of the highest win rate deck of my opponent. So kind of a little bit of a difference in band strategy there. Right. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how the two play out. Yeah, just just to clarify, just in case anyone did a, a double take at, hang on, the, the Hunter is going to struggle against the Warrior. There is there is no high mains in this deck. There's no yeah. Call of the Wild in this deck. This is a, a throwback to old school Face Hunter. And when you have a deck that, you know, can tank up, can shield block, and has some minions that just gain you 10 life, yeah. that's going to be a bit of a problem to push through. So completely agree the Hunter could definitely be a sticking point for BB Gun Gun to get through here. But it does line up pretty well against, uh, you know, classically Face Hunter against Zoo, one of the strongest matchups for Face Hunter. Do you think that's still the case with these new builds? I don't think it's nearly as strong as it used to be. It can be very shaky okay. at times now, and we're not going to get right into that matchup, but we are going to have BB Gun Gun queuing up first game with the Face Hunter deck up against Silent Storm's midrange shaman. And if you talk to some of the players that were in like EU last call that were bringing the Face Hunter, they say this is the reason why they brought it is because of this matchup here. Okay. Not even just because of Zoo. And uh, you, you have players like Exeries and Camlin yes. from the EU server posting up top 10 legend results with Face Hunter saying it's the answer to the midrange shaman meta. So. We'll have right. to see if that's true. Yeah, in, in, in the current meta, if you're hitting top 10 legend with a deck, that is either a shaman deck, a druid deck, or it's a deck that beats a lot of shaman and druid. That's, yeah. that's basically how it works at the moment. So this hunter deck falling into the ladder category, he does get the secret keeper start. The, the Secret Keeper isn't quite the uh, the PTSD Secret Keepers that we used to see from Secret Paladin. The Hunter Secret is just a little bit slower in terms of making that thing really go off, but still can be a big problem if you don't immediately have the minions to address it. And we see the Spirit Claws come out for Silent Storm. And the reason why he does this instead of Totem Golem is so that he can play around the Freezing Trap or you know, any of the other secrets that could interrupt his Totem Golem from being able to do work. Sure. So now he's going to be able to just get rid of the Secret Keeper immediately. He knows there's not a lot of minions in that deck, and if he's able to stop the few minions that are in the deck from getting chip damage, he'll be able to stabilize the board at a reasonable life total. Well, I'm pretty sure the intention is to just play Blood Mage and kill the Secret Keeper, yeah. right? Like, that's yeah. that's the ordering we're going for here. So can BB Gun Gun perhaps get a handle on this and make his Secret of Choice here Snake Trap over anything else? Yeah, that, that would definitely be... The wisest of the secrets, in my opinion, is to just open up with the snake trap when you see your opponent. Because also we know Silent Storm kept the Totem Golem, right? So that yep. was in his opening hand, and he kept it. And now, as BB Gun Gun, you got to think, what cards would my Shaman opponent keep that aren't one-drops? There you go. And it's it's Totem Golem almost every time. So you have to expect your opponent's keeping either Totem Golem or Blood Mage Thalnos. So just developing the snake trap there, making reads off of what your opponent's doing. And that's going to put uh, BB Gun Gun in a very favorable position, able to get a bunch of chip damage in. Definitely is. Silent Storm snap picks the play here. Has to drop the Blood Mage and go for it. There's no option. He's just going to have to shut his eyes and hope this is not the Snake Trap. By far the worst trap for him in this situation. He gets the bad news that it is. And now BB Gun Gun has a pretty dominant ball position already. But 
one or two too many secrets have been drawn this early on yeah. here without a cloaked huntress to go with them if that that draw off the top there was the huntress instead of that third trap then bb gun gun would just be on dream street right now but mm -hmm. there, that is a a slow looking hand for such an aggressive deck but it's still not a bad looking hand honestly sure. like the the amount of damage he's getting in early is just so huge when you think in the fact that shaman has no heal if they take a bunch of damage early on they just die. Yes. They, they, they don't have a way to stop Kill Command coming into the face. So it, the Secret Keeper getting in for two, and now the Snake's getting in for an additional three. It's just so much damage piling up so quickly that if BB Gun can, can manage even just a little bit more chip, it's going to be insane. And we do see him develop the cat trick here so that he can avoid getting his board swept by something like Maelstrom Portal. And it's also right on turn three where Silent Storm wants to be playing something like Feral Spirits, for example. So Did someone say Maelstrom Portal? There it is, picked up indeed by Silent Storm. And since the cat trick was played, he was obligated to um, take care of the Blood Mage. Otherwise, he did actually, like, potentially was able to just ignore that and take his greedy one extra damage to face since the Blood Mage wasn't really going to do any harm that turn. But killing the Blood Mage, of course, plays around this exact play, which is coin first and then Maelstrom Portal. But Silent Storm now coins first, gets the maximum information about his turn. Now that he sees the, uh, the cat in the hat has come out, there is potential. 25% of the time, you look like an absolute genius here if you press your hero power. Yeah, I guess <laughs> if you press your hero power and go for the 25% the, the, the roll. But I, I'm curious as to what led him to the decision to even playing the coin this turn. I thought Mana Tide was just a fine play. And it, it, this is a bit risky for him. He figures, you know, six out of seven times it's not Cat Trick. So he decides to, to go for it and got really punished when it happened to be Cat Trick. All right. I mean, that's a reasonable pickup with the Celsi deck hand. Definitely one of the higher value ones you can have if you have a weapon equipped. But yeah, it's a, it's a question of, you know, how bad is this matchup? And I think he's just fine with this situation here. The Totem Golem is kind of a low value play in that situation because it does get immediately traded by the Cat in the Hat if uh, BB Gun Gun wants to respect it and take it out. And right on time, or at least one turn late, drawn early enough to still be relevant in proceedings, the Cloaked Huntress has now been picked up. Yeah, we may not even see it developed here as it does... Uh and yeah, you most likely see it developed here. It is a, a pretty solid body, but there's something to think about with like regards to squeezing in hero powers for chip damage and stuff like that. But here's, I, a, here's a question. If you play Cloak Huntress and both traps here, do you take the trade into the deck hand instead of the Totem Golem? No. Okay. <laughs> no, you, you probably do not. I, I wanted to go face with the 4-1. I'm just Interesting. thinking okay. potentially the line is just explosive trap hero power go face for 4 because that that's pushing 8 damage this turn and your opponent's down to 16. That's just a few hero powers and a kill command away from killing him. Sure. Uh, it does is it's not backed up by a whole lot of aggression straight afterwards though is the only problem he definitely would be looking to trust his deck but having drawn a vast majority of his secrets already his deck is really dense with just damage leroy jenkins unleash kill commands bows all this good stuff argent horse rider as well he does push the damage to face yep. allowing silent storm the flexibility here as to uh, which of these minions he wants to freeze on his own terms uh, the deck hand of course does have some value coming back out later as even as a three mana removal spell it's not the worst thing in the world so no surprise here to see silent storm getting that card back in his hand but as you said damage just ramping up here and the shaman life total is an extremely finite resource it's not something that they can rebuild once it's gone yeah but with bb gun gun down to one card in his hand silent storm can actually you know fend off this aggression while maintaining some amount of board presence by just using the South Sea deckhand to remove the 4-1 and then trading, you know, three more life to get the full board clear here with his weapon. Yep. And being at 17 while your opponent has only two cards to work with is not that bad for this matchup. Sure is. So he does gain the additional four to the face, but leaving the South Sea deckhand on board does open up this play of it getting frozen and replayed, as we talked about. But he's BB Gun Gun's essentially already got his damage through with that uh, cat in the hat after it's died now. So, you know, essentially, if you're playing an aggro deck, if your minion gets to connect once each minion that you play and deal its damage, that's kind of job done. You feel like you have enough damage in your deck left at that point. And uh, uh, Silent Storm actually chooses to go face himself here. What's this attack about, Fireback? Looks like he wants to, to race BB Gun Gun. It's, it seems very interesting to me that this is going to allow him to take two damage extra in the immediate. Now he doesn't have the weapon to make the clean trade off, so he can't play a thing from below next turn. 
I, I really am not too big of a fan of this play, but he does get rid of the secret in case BB Gun Gun had the bow. Mm -hmm. So that will limit a bow charge in the long run, but you do take three immediate additional face damage by letting the Cloaked Huntress just dome you in the face. Yeah, definitely interesting. I mean, Thing From Below is actually a pretty good racing tool um, in, in this kind of situation because of it's it's actually aggressive enough as a 5-5 minion to be a threat on the board. And, of course, it being a taunt just walls your opponent out. But, I don't know, Racing Face Hunter is not a deck that... is not a thing that many decks have been able to do successfully unless, unless that deck is, like, Pirate Warrior, right? Like, it's just not something that people are able to do. And... I think Silent Storm may have just got himself in a bit of a mess here. He's already taken too much damage, and just with the hero power clock now, he has to get this job done while killing every single minion BB Gun pl uh, plays. Well, he has to get this done in five turns minimum. Yeah, five turns to try and make something happen. He's got eight pressure Ooh. on the board, but... Okay. I mean, that, that changes the clock. That gets another bow charge through the face this turn if he wants it, or the dogs if he, if he wants to go at it that way. So, yeah, I mean, that... that lowers the amount of turns that Silent Storm has left already. Yeah, BB Gun Gun able to maintain board control here, just keep his 3-4 healthy, push more damage to the face, set Silent Storm down to 5. Yep. Then he's looking at a 3 damage top deck to close out this game, which includes 2 Quick Shots, 2 Kill Commands, 1 Eagle Horn Bow, and 1 Leroy Jenkins. So, a lot of cards that could uh, end Silent Storm in this situation if he chooses to go that aggressive, or he can potentially just develop the Kindly Grandmother and hold on to the Unleash the Hounds for more value, but he misses out three damage in the immediate. It's true. Is this um, a feasible lethal setup if he holds on to the Unleash the Hounds here? So, you know, as we can see it, there will be at least one minion left on the board. The 5-5 five five definitely cannot die if he leaves it up here. The problem is, is he's almost kind of telegraphing an Unleash here if he chooses not to bust through the taunt because the question gets asked by the opponent, why wouldn't he double trade into the taunt here? The only real answer that you get for that is, is Unleash the Hounds. Um, he has set up a uh, way that now the Totem Golem can't be traded off the yep. board. So this is really interesting. If two minions get added to Silent Storm's board, that's just lethal. Mm -hmm. Just So this is a really interesting lethal setup here by BB Gun Gun to try and force Silent Storm to be unable to trade off his minions to play around Unleash. And if he doesn't develop into Unleash, he loses because the hero power kills him. Yep. Because Shaman has no out of hand damage, really. They have right. to have board. And if he doesn't develop, Right, and if he does develop, he just dies. Right, yeah. So, like, back to the earlier point. This is now kind of a two-part question. Firstly, as Silent Storm, can you get a read on almost precisely Unleash the Hounds at this point because of yeah, this setup? Yeah, it has to be Unleash the Hounds. Secondly, does that matter? Like, can you play around it? Can you activate a clock quick enough that beats Unleash the Hounds here? Well, he has eight going face, and he's. Uh, you can assume that, I guess, at this point, the Unleash will be able to kill the 5-2. So you have eight this turn, and then seven the next turn with Totem Golem plus Azur Drake. So that's 15, and then six over two turns with the Spirit Claws is enough to set up 21 damage over two turns, assuming the 5-2 dies. So Silent Storm does set up a lethal on his own side. This is coming right down to the wire. BB Gun Gun now needs some help of his own here. Kindly Grandmother is not it. It's one of the few bricks left in the deck. Well, so now BB Gun Gun has to make a defensive play with the Unleash the Hounds. Mm -hmm. He has to trade off the 5-2 and the 3-2. Silent Storm will have seven damage left, and Silent Storm will be looking for Lightning Bolts or Fire Elemental or Ragnaros off the top to close the game out. Yep, so BB Gun Gun is going to assess the situation like we said. You know, he has been taking his time on plays like this. They are fairly straightforward one-dimensional plays, but at high-pressure points in the game. And this is what we've seen him do thematically throughout this tournament so far, is really, really take his time and assess his outs in situations like this. But there, there is literally only one line of play in this situation. Yeah, and we're going to see him take it. One of the points you can think about is whether or not you want to play the Kindly Grandmother or not. Yep. I feel like there's no reason to hold it back. I mean, is there a card that you can potentially bluff it as that would change your opponent's line that's more valuable than having a 1-1 on the board? Probably not. I can't think of anything really, so... Yeah, BB Gun Gun just has to play it out here. The one line is made, and Whoa. yeah, he's just going to go ahead and double trade out that Totem Golem, as expected, swing the bow at the face, and it all comes down to this draw from Silent Storm. That's a taunt, potentially, if he needs it. He can yep. keep himself alive that turn with the defensive hex on one of his own totems if he doesn't get the taunt totem. Sure, yeah, he has the Lightning Storm to clear. He's got Barnes for potential lethal with a Ragnaros. That's true. 
Um, Flame Tongue Totem would do it as well. Yep. So that is uh, three Barnes minions out of the deck that would get the job done. Can get Taunt as well. Thunder Bluff doesn't do it. No totem on board to get buffed right now. So now he's going to have to either go for the uh, Maelstrom Portal clear, the Lightning Storm clear, or a uh, defensive play with a, with a Hex on his own minion, which is a bit dramatic at this point since you can clear anyway. So he is going to go ahead and portal. Uh, I guess. Oh, he took his um, he took his out there off the portal first. Uh, the, like technically, he's taken extra damage off yep. his Drake, but he gave himself the South Sea deck hand lethal yep, out yep, off the, the South Sea deck portal. Hand. Like That's actually incredibly good sequencing from Silent Storm. But didn't I didn't catch it until afterwards while I was wondering whether he why he sequenced it that way at the Argent Horse Rider pickup made it all a formality for BB Gun Gun. He got that piece of damage he needed just one turn late. Gave Silent Storm some outs, but. Closing stages of that game, very, very high-level stuff from both players in the very, end. Very, very high-level stuff. But you, you have to beg the question, is it better for Silent Storm to go for his own lethal out off Barnes, or is it better to try and play around the two Argent Horse Riders in BB Gun Gun's deck by going for Maelstrom Portal, Hex the Maelstrom Portal one drop? That's a very good question, because yeah. he still takes his South Sea Deckhand out at that point Yeah, first, he still right? gets the so South Sea Deckhand out right. potential, and he's also setting up lethal for the next turn and guaranteeing himself a taunt to be able to beat Argent Horse Rider. So he beats two cards from his opponent, but lowers the odds that he wins that turn because he doesn't take the Barnes roll on the three potential outs there. So who knows the real numbers on that math, but if someone like ran the numbers, you could definitively say which of those two lines was better, and it's a really close call and a tough thing to do on in stage to figure out the best line possible there. Yep, feel free to tweet us and let us know. If you want to do the numbers, tweet, play Hearthstone and let us know. We're going to give you a second to work all that out. TLDR, Hearthstone is hard, guys. We will be right back after this. Welcome back, guys, to the finals of the America's Last Call Invitational, the quest for the final remaining spot at the Hearthstone World Championship. It's it's Master versus Student, it's uh, the USA versus Canada at this point, and it's uh, it's America and the Master who is so far on top, picking up a win with the Face Hunter in the aggro versus aggro game, and these players are not messing around whatsoever. Looks like the pace is not going to slow down either. Two fairly quick decks coming out again. It's going to be the Zoo versus is the mid-range shaman and oh have the how the mighty have fallen oh, just a few months ago zoo was a deck that you brought to a tournament to make sure that shaman didn't get too far out of control and yep. now with the advent of spirit claws of maelstrom portal of you know them going mid-range and getting storms back in the deck all this stuff like zoo just has such a torrid time in this matchup now yeah it, it's really rough for zoo and even Abusive Sergeant got nerfed as well, which makes right. it a lot harder, too, because th that's not a 2-1 that can trade with totems anymore. So it, it, it's really tricky to navigate. And we can look at BB Gun's deck list, though. It's a really weird Zoo deck list with a lot of tech in it. He's got a Young Priestess, one Power Overwhelming with the Soulfire Discard version, one Abusive Sergeant, and one Crazed Alchemist. Y you got to admit, and one Defender of one Argus. One Defender of Argus! Yeah, he's, he's it's made the best the, card! He's made the build a lot faster, a lot more board control oriented, and yeah. the Young Priestess helps buff things out of uh, Maelstrom Portal range. The Crazed Alchemist can come down and flip a Mana Tide Totem and win you the game. Yeah. So I, I really sincerely believe that this zoo build is geared to doing better against mid-range shaman than a typical zoo deck interesting yeah the the young priestess intrigues me a little bit so it's a card that comes back in ever every now and again and it started seeing play again since all the sticky death rattle minions rotated out and it's kind of like a solution to make these less sticky minions a bit more sticky well, again by yeah. giving them the extra health so the, I don't know. It the does awkward work. thing about the card is it, it helps you play around aoe but itself dies to aoe yeah, like it's right. It, it's kind of like a catch-22 there. It's Yeah, she, she just runs out there and just dives on the grenade for the other yeah, minions. Yeah. They're just like, I'll take this, boys. I got it. Uh, but oh. the, the huge impact here is the two spell damage totems in a row. Wrath of Air on demand for Silent Storm right now. And uh, this, it's allowing his Spirit Claws to do an incredible amount of work, but BB Gun Gun as well acknowledges Silent Storm's peerless Shaman skills with the rolling of the Wrath of Air Totem. But that is what has allowed Silent Storm to uh, just keep this board under control, and no more than that, really, but under control at least. And BB Gunhead has great ways here, actually, to deal with this 5-5. He's got the Soul Fire if he wants to take it. He also have Direwolf plus Abusive on his Dark Peddler can power through it. And it looks like he's going to go with the Soul Fire plus the Dark Peddler trade to clear it. 
What do you think about this? Like, Direwolf plus Abusive just looked incredibly clean to me. Is there a reason, you know, some sort of counterplay that he's worried about in making that, that board development line? To have a lot of tutus on the board that way, I guess. Spell damage, Maelstrom Pool, and Lightning Storm are in his mind. Doesn't want to overcommit that many minions. Just happy with the Soul Fire here and just take what he has in play, I guess. Yeah, I, th I think that has to be the logic behind it. Like, personally, I would have went all in on the board development sure. and just been like, if he's got AoE, he's got AoE. That's how the matchup rolls. But yeah. BB Gun Gun kind of playing it a little tight to the vest here. Is he just going to straight up Abusive Sergeant his his Darkshire Councilman? This can't be right, right? He's going ah. to he's gonna sell fire afterwards, I guess. He just wants to use the Abusive this turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, just yeah, wants yeah. to guarantee using the Abusive. He's going to go ahead and sell fire anyway. Uh, jams the five damage through to the face with the Councilman. Still has an imposing board state. I mean... Hey, look at the end product. This play looks pretty reasonable, right? Sure. Yeah. It's a slightly weaker board position, but uh, potentially preserves better resources for you later on. You got to imagine he was really hoping to hold on to that Direwolf Alpha. It's sure. such a, a strong card in Zoo. Yeah, and being left with the, the two discard cards next to each other here isn't... The, uh, the greatest thing in the world, he'll be looking to pick up Silverware Golem, Malkazar's Imp, something like that to try and uh, bring some positivity to this hand of discards so far. But just a fairly miserable looking turn here for Silent Storm. Does address things. The Taunt Totem is relevant because that can you know, reasonably be expected as the Shaman player here to tank the, that attack from the Darkshire Councilman and give you some time to operate on your own turns. But there is exactly the Malkazar's Imp. Yeah. Soulfire will take care of the only relevant threat on the board, and uh, BB Gun Gun's board dominance is continuing here. Yeah, I really like the Soulfire there, just being able to secure up protecting this Darkshire Councilman that was left unanswered from the previous turn. All right, all right, Firebat, play it or life tap? What's the plan? Oh, I, I, I want to play it. You know, my opponents had a bunch of weak turns up until this point, so I'm trying to assume what's in their hand. Probably either AoE or weak stuff, and I'll take the gamble on it just being slow minions every day of the week and try and push board initiative, but BB Gun Gun's a much more controly oh! style of player, and he is getting <laughs> rewarded. That I was about to say, there is an aversion in this deck. When you when you play this deck, you you just feel so bad about paying mana for Silverware Golem that you you can feel like life tapping is just superior in that situation a lot of the time. There is upside to just getting an extra card in your hand, and you know I, I was going to say the Silverware Golem will potentially play itself later. I didn't quite anticipate exactly this turn it managing to happen. These new uh, discard mechanics that have been added to the zoo make it so much more explosive. Uh, so much more swingy and much more of a high-risk deck. Like for as much hatred as Zoo received in the past, it's actually kind of one of the more honest decks in yeah. Hearthstone. If you wanna, if you wanna put it that way, you, everyone knew what it was going to do, and everyone knew how to stop it, and it just came down to a to a battle of those two things, tug of warring against each other. But now the deck can just absolutely detonate out of nowhere with turns like this. Yeah, super super explosive turn. And Silent Storm doesn't have like really good ways to combat it. He really doesn't want to play. Feral Spirits and get overloaded, but it, he feels like there's too much pressure on the board and he has to do it. So this is going to lock up those Thunder Bluff Valiants in his hand even longer, and he's just playing off the top of his deck to try and find some action. Two Doom Guards left remaining would have been beautiful draws here. Crazed Alchemist does fill the curve with the Defender of Argus, but it's not a huge looking turn right now. What, do, what does the Crazed Alchemist really do for him at this point? He can pump some more health back onto his Councilman and start rebuffing the attack, but it's, it's not the greatest looking Crazed Alchemist I've ever seen, I gotta be honest. Yeah, it's uh, it's okay. You can make the, the Malkazar Zimba 3-1 to allow it to trade up. Sure. But that's really not what you want to be doing a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything just seems frustratingly out of reach. You know, like Argus, the Malkazar's in, that gives it four health. You then flip it. It's not quite there to push through the 5-5. Five five. Like, e every combination of these two cards seems to just run into that same kind of one-off problem of doing something perfect. Mm. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to be probably just Argusing, value trading, and just trying to set up a lot of tension on the board, make it kind of awkward for Silent Storm really to do much. Or he's just going to go with the full clear. It's a very aggressive approach to this. And uh, just to say he's just going to Argus the remainders here. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is reasonable. And like I said, I mean, I, I I quickly scanned everything there to try and find something glorious because it felt like something was there, yeah. but like nothing, nothing popped out at me. This is, um, you know, kind of mediocre, but still a very dominant position for him. Yeah, very just kind of okay zoo yep. position. It helps right. him play around AoE the most out of any other 
kind of lines that he had there just because he's able to get that full clear so no Ooh, damage would be pushed boy. through with AoE. So that is 14 damage that can be sent downtown at this point and that means second Doomguard connecting to the face at any point is just straight up lethal. We made the point before, not a deck that heals is, mm -hmm. is, is mid-range Shaman or most Shamans in general. So Doomguard go face question mark. You got to be afraid of Hex, you got to be afraid of AoE. Silent Storm's had a lot of dead cards sitting in his hand, and it's it really depends on how well BB Gun's getting a read of this hand in this situation here. And it turns out pretty good, because he does make the play going all face there. Doomguard, go face, exclamation mark. There you go. That solved the question. As your Drake picked up, he's going to need a Storm here. Storm plus the Lightning Bolt will allow a full clear here. Just Storm on its own has a, has a solid chance too with the uh, trade on the on the Thunder Bluff Valiant, but looks like he's going to need to find an additional option here with the Azir Drake. Don't think he has any answer to this board with his current hand. All right, Feral Spirit, is that enough? It does theoretically keep him alive. Theoretically, with any buff from BB Gun's deck, That'll yep. be lights out for him. We didn't see two soul fires used, right? And uh, so there's really just a power overwhelming. The crazed alchemist is gone. One direwolf is I gone. Think, I think we've seen three soul fires yeah. used. I think yeah. we've seen one from a peddler as well. So yeah. 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 Soul fire is really good in tempo matchups where it's focused around board control like this one. So. Getting those three soul fires has allowed BB Gun Gun to get to this position. There's the young priestess, but that looked like Doomguard oh. number two. That oh is Doomguard number two. BB Gun Gun gives the, the proper reverence to the young priestess, not discarding her, giving her a moment in the sun, but that Doomguard connecting to face. BB Gun Gun goes up to a 2-0 lead right now. And so far, Silent Storm as the student has, has no answers to Master BB right now. Yeah, the master keeps reading the student Pretty much perfectly. Oh, he, he just seems to know what cards are in his hand almost. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 pretty ridiculous stuff at this point. BB Gun Gun definitely is showing his dominance here and that. That all hinged on the decision, you know, pushing face, being incredibly aggressive on the previous turn with the Doom Guard. Did have a chance to keep going for value. Maybe what that boils down to is that it means that then Silent Storm has that one extra turn. Perhaps the Lightning Storm is the next card yeah. in the deck and it just gets there in time. Uh, wasn't able to push it. He did leave himself slightly more exposed to those niche things for one turn and one turn only. But there, as you see, there are some fans who at one point were incredibly happy with proceedings for Canada, rooting on Silent Storm. They might be a little bit more subdued just now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, whenever yeah. this footage was taken, at least they were feeling good about Canada's hopes in this tournament. There you go. And so Canada's going to have to climb their way back in from, from the ground up here. How does, how does this fight back begin from Silent Storm from here? Oh, he's got a long journey. Any time where you have to play, you know, all of your decks remaining against only two of your opponent's decks, you're going to need a huge edge to win. If it turns into like a 3-1 situation, for example, you would need over 80% in every single matchup yep. to be favored to win the series. So it is huge that BB Gun Gun's off to such a lead. But if Silent Storm were to fight back, one of the ways that he could really do it is exploiting Temple Mage. It's not a tier one deck in a lot of people's minds, so it's very exploitable and has potential weaknesses. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a very good point. It's, it's kind of Conquest 101, right? You have to you have to find a weak link and you have to go after it as hard as you can. And here is the Tempo Mage, and now it's gonna be Silent Storm this time on that explosive Zoo deck. His his build not quite as off the wall and niche as uh, some of the cards that we saw from BB Gun Gun, more of the solid, consistent list that you've probably encountered on ladder several times, especially when the expansion was fresh. Does have that crazed alchemist tech, but not a great deal of anything else yeah. out of the ordinary. One tech card in the entire deck list, as opposed to BB's Gun Gun's deck, which could almost be a Reno deck at this point. Mm. That's how many tech cards were jammed inside of it. All right, so BB Gun Gun picks up the double one drop here, pretty solid. He would have liked some removal spells to go with them to leverage this Mana Worm against Zoo. Um, has the, the clunky um, Cabalist Tome and Drake stuck in his opening hand here. And you know that, that little bit of uh, expense in his opening hand might just cause the Zoo to be able to run away and get out to an advantage here. But uh, BB Gun Gun's Tempo Mage list, does it play Flame Strike is the big question. I think it does from memory, but just for reference, yeah, there is one copy of Flame Strike in there. The the curve tops out at Drake and then goes to one Cabalist Tome and one Flame Strike, which is a little bit of an unusual build, but Flame Strike is definitely one of the big catch up mechanisms in this matchup. Yeah, no Firelands Portal in the deck list is yep. something that's quite strange, and it's a card I guess you don't really need when you're banning Warrior, as BB Gun Gun has done throughout the tournament. It's 
one of those pretty kinda, good against Druid. It's pretty good against Druid as well. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more of a late game card though. It's better against right. control decks, and you're banning one of the two control decks in the format. So it makes sense that that could be a card that sees getting cut. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, BB Gun Gun does choose to poke in with the Mana Worm there. What are the implications of a attack or no attack there on that turn with the, the Mana Worm? Is it just playing around Abusive Sergeant? Are there, there other considerations? It plays around Abusive Sergeant, but plays into Dire Wolf Alpha. Right. So that's where it gets a little hazy and uh, can be a bit awkward. But uh, BB Gun Gun, I guess, is just saying he's fairly comfortable if Dire Wolf Alpha comes out. Yeah. I think so. I guess is if the the Die Wolf Alpha comes out, he's not in the worst position. He can address a decent amount of the board with a ping and the the babbling book trade. And since the rest of his hand was so clunky, his him having those two one drops in his opener is is a huge deal for him. But even off the babbling book, he's just kind of picked up another fairly awkward card with mm -hmm. the Dragon's Breath. It's not like Zoo is going to allow you to stick enough minions on the board most of the time to be able to get good value out of that by you know, doing trade, trade into Dragon's Breath. So yeah. looks like an awkward situation. And we cast this match up earlier, Firebat, and you said there's one card that yeah. terrorizes the Tempo Mage. Which card is that? That's the Imp Gang boss. It just, none of the Tempo Mage's removal besides Spell Power Arcane Blast lines up well against it. And even that, you have to invest two cards into killing half of one card. Yeah. It's just absolutely insane value and it shuts down so many good Flame Waker clears that it, it just absolutely ravishes the Tempo Mage. So Flame Waker drawn, but that is a potential win condition minion in this matchup. It's a potential minion that allows you to clear your opponent's board and leave a thing in play, which is how to beat Zoo 101. Like essentially the guide to beating Zoo has one page and that's the description. It's clear their board and have a dude in play. Like that's, yep. that's how you win. Um, so what do you think of his decision here to just play out the Flame Waker on the board here on turn three? He has to find some way to keep up on tempo with Zoo. If he falls too far behind, he won't be able to recover and he'll die before he gets to Flame Strike. So he just has to hope there's no Abusive Sergeant. And we saw this happen before as well. This matchup was played on stream, and there was an Imp Gang boss down, and the opponent had a Flame Waker, and they just played it down, and it got Abusive Sergeant and trade into, and then the Zoo snowballed from that position. But it's a risk you have to take. If there's no Abusive Sergeant there, and that Flame Waker just sticks, suddenly you're in business. Was he that far behind, though? Here's my question. If he just cast Arcane Intellect that turn, traded into the Voidwalker, and he had a 2-1 Mana Worm in play against the 2-4 Imp Gang boss and two extra cards in his hand and still a Flame Waker, is that, like, is that an insurmountable position? It, it can be. It can, Zoo gets out of control very quick. Okay. They're just going to continue buffing it. And it, at that point, how likely is it that there's an Abusive Sergeant in hand? You just had a Mana Worm in play and they, they didn't Abusive Sergeant trade into it. They sure. instead coined an Imp Gang boss. You could make that read that there's no Abusive Sergeant in the hand and be like, it's my time to shine. Let's get that Flame Waker in play. Fair enough. As it happens, the best possible turn four, almost. You know, Sorcerer's Apprentice into Arcane Intellect, picking up two playable zero mana spells that enable him to uh, fight for some board dominance here is a huge deal. Um, it's, but a pretty explosive turn from Silent Storm himself, cycling a card off the Malkazar's Imp, clearing down the board, just the Mana Worm left in play now. So, yeah, this is this looks like a, a draw Flame Strike and survive that long kind of game now for BB Gun Gun. Is there anything crazy he could get off this Barnes that really helps him? There's not too many things. It's mainly just card draw, uh, potentially yeah. a Flame Waker, but that's not going to help him with no mana to spend spells on. Ugh. Must be. I think he might have to tome this turn and look for look for a blizzard, cone of cold, maybe <laughs> flame strike, that okay. kind of thing. I think it's just the only kind of outs. Like if I, I'm not a fan of this card, you may have heard that once or twice. Sure. But you know, if it's if it's in your deck, you have to trust it, right? Mm -hmm. It's in your deck because you think it was going to give you playable spells for the situation that you're in more often than not. So if it's in your deck, I want to see it used. And I, I agree with the line here from Gun Gun just to just to throw it out there, hope to pick up some AOE, but as a big old pile of nothing. Yeah, now you can either choose to go face, deal five damage and basically kill a 1-1, one, one, or kill a 3-2, don't deal 5 damage to the face, and, but remove a little bit of the pressure from your opponent, which is a really tough decision because it ev eventually it comes down to a race. Or you can kill the, the Malkazar Zimp, the 1-3, and try and deny the card draw engine from your opponent. And that's what BB Gun Gun decides is the most valuable thing to get off the table. There's always another option, Firebats. The yeah. thing about this game, there's always another line in so, there somewhere. So that means BB Gun Gun's going to focus on, I guess, trying to exhaust 
Silent Storm. That's kind of, he read the, the cards off the tome and was like, all right, I got removal for, you know, onboard minions with the Arcane Blast. And then he got the Polymorph Boar to answer the Doom Guard. So if a Doom Guard comes down, he can answer the Doom Guard, clear up a little bit of the board. As long as there aren't two cards added to his opponent's hand, he could beat an on-curve Doom Guard from Silent Storm, which I think is why he made the trade in the Malchazar's Imp there. He's really hoping Silent Storm just plays Doom Guard. Makes sense. Uh, no such luck, though. BB Gun Gun now just having to resort to the Azure Drake Arcane Blast. The Doom Guard does come down now, but uh, a turn too late. The fact that he managed to get pressure with other minions outside of the Doom Guard might just mean that that one extra turn of really relentless pressure that he got out there might just be enough to seal this game. Yeah, it, it could be. It could be. There's still a potential that BB Gun Gun can outgrind the zoo, but it, it's going to be tough for sure. Is it even a Doomguard turn though? Because there's some great trades on the board here that you can you can do through the use of your your buff cards, and it looks the, like the fear about the trading. Is going for the fear about trading that I have the most is what if Flame Strike comes down? Mm -hmm. he, he, Silent Storm isn't doing enough damage to be able to lethal after the Flame Strike. So if Flame Strike comes out here for BB Gun Gun, it could totally flip the game over. No <laughs> such luck. You build it up, and the deck let you down. Let BB Gun Gun down. He's going to Arcane Intellect here. Search for a magical Frost Nova that's not in his deck, and that's just not a solution. Loot Hoarder and yeah. Fireball, not what he needed. So it uh, looks like Silent Storm is going to get himself on the board here. I, I like how... He's thinking through all the possibilities, trying to figure out if there's anything that could save him. He was looking for Arcane Intellect into maybe Babbling Book, or did he already play that this game? He already he did, played yeah. it, yeah. yeah. There's only one in the deck as well, so... Yep, not really seeing a solution for him there as he missed out on the Flame Strike. He fell behind on the board early. He had a couple of those clunky cards, the Kabbalist Tome, in, in, in his hand that could have potentially been a Forgotten Torch or an Acolyte of Pain, something along those lines in, in different versions of the list. So he fell behind. He didn't get the Flame Strike he needed to catch back up, and that is going to be Silent Storm getting on the board. But as we spoke about before, very, very favorable matchup for the Zoo overall. I wouldn't say very, very favor. When they draw Imp Gang Boss, it is. Right, sure. If they don't draw Imp Gang Boss, I think it's actually kind of in favor slightly of the Tempo Mage. Really? But okay. they draw Imp Gang Boss more often than they don't. Yes. So it is true. in favor of the zoo okay, slightly right, at the sure. end of the day. All right, yeah. That, that, that was a lot of maths, <laughs> but we, we got there in the end. We will uh, continue with this series right after this. Don't go anywhere, guys. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We are in the finals of the America's Last Call Invitational, the final event of the 2016 Hearthstone Championship Tour circuit until we get into opening week and BlizzCon. And one of these two guys, BB Gun Gun and Silent Storm, will be looking to book their spot as the 16th player out of 16 players making their way through to the Hearthstone World Championship. And so far, Firebat, it's been a story of the uh, the aggressive decks picking up wins, Zoo wins on both sides, the face hunter win as well for BB Gun Gun. We're going to see some, some mid range and control fighting back into this series at some point. Yeah, uh, it looks like we're going to be seeing the reverse of the matchup we just saw, right? Now we're going to have BB Gun Gun on the Tempo Mage, Silent Storm on the Shaman. So. Well, actually, the zoo was the last game. It was zoo, yeah. Yeah, you're just looking at me confused, and I was like, why is he looking so confused? And I was like, ah, <laughs> that's why, because I'm making no sense. <laughs> Clearly. All right, so. Silent Storm on the mid-range Shaman. Maybe we'll have a mid-range deck on the board, but you're right. It has been basically just aggro on aggro. Aggro being the, the most dominant, which typically tends to be the case in a lot of card games. Yeah, and this is a kind of a, a similar situation to what we talked about in length in, in both of the Zoo versus Mage games so far, where Totem Golem comes down early, and much like Imgang Boss, it's not really something wow. that the mage interacts with too well, apart from spell damage, Arcane Blast. So well, BB Gun Gun went for the two-turn kill with the Frostbolt, the healing Totem Punish. Uh, TMTJ comes out, but Flame Waker Arcane Missile's follow-up has a very high percentage of just being a full yeah. clear here, gets it even before the extra missiles. Now he's in good shape. Yeah, very, very good shape. Silent Storm's basically going to need to take a turn to deal with this. Just have to hex and pass a lot of the time, unless he feels like being a little bit frisky and developing into a Flame Waker. Do you know what? 
I think I think you can play a five five here. I think that's perfectly reasonable. I think if okay. you, like a lot of the time the removal that hits your five five is just a fireball sure. anyway, which you know, same thing. You trade your your five five for a fireball, that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Then next turn you can at least go hex plus totem golem or at least hex plus hero power, depending on what you want to go down. I think playing the five five here is perfectly reasonable. I think you're a brave man. I think <laughs> I think you're a brave man. I'm with Silent Storm on All this right. one. I'm hexing that every time. All right. There's a any number of combinations of Sorcerer's Apprentice plus, plus stuff could happen. And mm -hmm. what would have happened was Sorcerer's Apprentice plus Arcane Intellect plus Mirror Image plus potentially more things off the Arcane Intellect. Hey, if your opponent has literally the best yeah, possible okay. tempo, Mage Hand, then yeah, bad things are going to happen. I will agree with you there. Yeah, BB Gun Gun. He usually has some pretty good cards. Yeah, that's true. He's got the mulligan down pat. He is just going to develop the mirror image here. What's what's the reason for these zero twos on the board right now? Um, a Maelstrom Portal plus Spirit Claws is the only thing that really comes to mind. Try and play around that. They also just don't hold that much value in your hand, I guess. It's true. I mean, it's not. It's not like it's an Antonidas list. He's already used one Flame Waker, so. I mean, I guess it's Mana Worm that's the big synergy left with, with cheap spells in the deck, but yeah. he's just going to get that cast now while he can do it for zero. May not be able to fit it into the curve later for, for one mana if, say, the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice just gets Lightning Bolted down right now. And I think, honest, honestly, this is also just saying to Silent Storm, like, if you're, if you're foolhardy enough to Lightning Storm this board, sure. like, go nuts, right? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll test. I'm sure you're not, you know, a weak enough player to want to commit a Lightning Storm to this situation, but just in case you do, then why not? Yeah, I like it, just getting it out when you have the mana to do it. Mm. Well, we're going to have to see what this Arcane Intellect draws. No immediate plays jump to mind out of BB Gun Gun's hand. The the fact that he's been able to cast both Arcane Intellects for, for two mana in this in this matchup so far is, is huge because, yeah. you know, this deck already kind of erroneously is constantly referred to as Tempo Mage, no matter what the build is. Spending three mana to draw two cards is not a high tempo play. So the fact he's been able to do that a lot faster with the mana discount is is huge for him here, leaving so much mana open for him to continue his development. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's been very solid for him, and he has a bunch of minions he can choose to throw out here that develop. You know, he's developing kind of overextending into Storm, but if it is the Blood Mage Thalnos or the Loot Holder, both of these minions are cantrips, meaning that they cycle for another card. So you're not really getting any card disadvantage by it just getting thrown into an AoE. Sure. And uh, pretty good missiles. Honestly, he just needed that double shot on the 5-5 the five five to be able to push through with the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Got it. The extra damage hitting on the, the Totem Golem, not irrelevant either. And now, suddenly, Silent Storm's hand, just uh, kind of a, a pile of just awkward minions at this point. Is, a, is it a Mana Tide turn? Is it a Barnes turn? Like, what, what's the plan here? I definitely think it's not a storm turn, just because agree, right. your opponent's only got two power in the play. Yep. So you're right in b between Barnes and Manatide, and uh, I kind of like just going with Manatide because you get to squeeze in an extra totem. I think Barnes is going to gain value. If you can Barnes and Hero Power in the same turn, mm -hmm. it can hit something like Thunder Bluff Valiant and have a lot more effect. Or if you have minions on the board already, it can hit Flame Tongue Totem and have a lot more effect. So there's better situations you can place the Barnes in. And rolling totems is really good, especially when you get the Spell Power Totem. Yeah, I like it for sure. It's also just a, a play that potentially protects your existing Totem Golem, right? The Mana Tide Totem just becomes such a huge target for removal from the opponent that if it has to be attack, attack, ping with the minions that are shown on board, or if there's any removal spell in hand like a Frostbolt, then the, the Mana Tide will be soaking those up. And as you said, those two other Totems will remain in play, which just sets up a bigger potential uh, roll-off Barnes into the Thunderbluff Valiant on the following turn. Yeah, and it, even right now, you're just threatening Thunderbluff Valiant plus Hero Power. He's rolling into seven mana, yep. and with three totems on the board, that's a good place to be. Sure is. Bibi Gun Gun, his hand has uh, just got into a little bit of an awkward, like, hodgepodge of random things right now, from the babbling book, picking up an effigy, to him having a flame strike that he really can't cast right now, and then kind of the, the weird inclusion of the loot hoarder in his deck. It's just kind of a weird mishmash of cards going on right now, not really something that, that points to a, a distinct strategy. And it is just going to have to be attack, attack, ping to take care of the Mana Tide. Now is it storm time, Firebat? It's looking a little bit better. It, uh, slightly better. Slightly better. Not good enough for uh, you? I think there is some argument to wait, but I also wouldn't mind using it now. It's, okay. it's really close. The, the one good part about using it is it works so well with just playing Barnes. And you're not overextending into storm. I mean, into to flame strike, right? Like, for example, if you went Barnes plus Feral Spirits, then on turn seven, you're overextending into Flame Strike while giving your opponent three card draws, right? Which gets a little, <laughs> little sketchy. So I, I, I kind of like it here. Yep.
Forgotten Torch pick up something that has been missing from his draws so far. Like I said, he got the, the Cabalist Tome earlier on instead of one of those torches that he has in his deck. So these these early removal cards is something that he has been lacking a little bit in his, his Tempo Mage draws so far. But coming out a little bit late here, it probably is going to have to be a Flame Strike turn at this point. Is a Sorcerer turn plus the... Frostbolt on the Forgotten Torch, is it going to get enough done? I guess maybe it does. Maybe you can be a little bit greedier with the Flame Strike in this situation. Uh, it depends how much burn you really want to waste. The way BB Gun's decklist is sort of set up is he, he kind of slows down the game, Flame Strikes, clears a board, and then from there you just burn the face a lot because Shaman has no heal and he has a ton of card draw with double Loot Hoarder, Thalnos, right. Accolade of Pain, yeah. double Arcane Intellect, and double Torch in there for the burn. That then he just kind of role plays Freeze Mage for a little bit in the beginning <laughs> and then just burns him out towards the end. So it, it's really hard to say which is better. Like the Flame Strike's not a lot of value, but using two burn spells to control the board when you're playing such a burn heavy variant of the uh, Tempo Mage against a deck with no healing. Also slightly unappealing, it's just which line is the least unappealing, I guess. There's the Thunder Bluff Valiant turn uh, picked up just a turn too late for Silent Storm, but I, I agree with you. It, it's, when I first suggested that you know you could make the Sorcerer's Apprentice play this turn, I was I was thinking perhaps too too much along the lines of some of the tempo mages we've seen from the other players, where they can they can scale into board dominance with the Faceless Summoners and the the Ragnaros if they gain control of the board in the late game. But mm -hmm. you're kind of right. This this deck doesn't really have any of that plan available to it. It just has to burn face after a certain point. Yeah, there's not even Firelands portals in there for right. board dominance. It's literally just Ezer Drake at the top end. Right. And then after that, you're Freeze Mage. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! I'm Freeze Mage now. Yeah. Uh, but the, the does pull out the Feral Spirits here from Silent Storm does BB Gun Gun, but now with uh, no real proactive looking play, uh, the question has to be asked on Flame Strike again. But since he can ping the three one and develop a minion here again, it's actually a low value Flame Strike when you look at it. I think Azure Drake and, and ping off the three one is is perfectly reasonable in this situation. Yeah, I, I don't hate that play either. The, the Ezra Drake pushes four damage to face, too, because your opponent is most likely going to try and tempo you out by Spirit Clawsing. Yep. And then in return to them tempoing you out with the Spirit Claws, you catch back up on tempo with the, the full reset of the Flame Strike. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the longer you wait, I mean, I'm sure Silent Storm is paying attention to this card on the far left that's been there for yeah. an extremely long time. But the longer you wait, you know, the longer you can kind of sell your opponent down the river that you don't have the flame strike. Silent, Silent Storm keeps presenting these kind of just about flame strikeable boards to BB Gun Gun. So, you know, how many more of these turns does it take for him to be convinced that the flame strike isn't there? Okay. Effigy coming out to play just to try and get some value out of the card while he can. Mm, potentially trying to, to pretend that it is a, a mere entity and to Silent discourage Storm. exactly this kind of play here, potentially. Yeah, Silent Storm's not going to buy it, and yeah. he's just going to throw the Thunder Bluff Valiant out there and push a ton of damage. And now you have to imagine maybe Gun Gun's going to be gunning for that Flame Strike. He needs a hell of a three drop here, and that is not it. That is uh, one of the weakest outcomes you can get, just a 2-2. Two -two meaning that Silent Storm can trade very effectively. And now that six health on the Thunder Bluff Valiant means that Flame Strike is just ineffective here. Well, it, it's it's helpful. It allows him to kill it next sure. turn with the, the, the Forgotten Torch that he has. But, yeah. Or you just ping it over two turns, which is most likely going to be what he does here. But eh, the most important part is the totems are gone. Thunder Bluff doesn't do anything if there's no totems. Well, I wouldn't say doesn't do anything. I mean, it allows him to play a Flame Tongue Totem and okay. an additional Totem here. You know, these are two sure. self-sustaining threats that now get developed on the board because the Thunder Bluff was left to live. So, you know, sure, you can now ping off the Thunder Bluff, but you've left yourself now an entire turn behind the play because Silent Storm has been able to develop ahead of you with a low resource hand just because the, the surviving Thunder Bluff has turned a low resource hand into a, just another attacking threat. That's Shaman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In a nutshell right there, that is Shaman, and BB Gun Gun is experiencing it. Yep. So obligated now to take care of the Thunder Bluff, the Flame Tongue Totem as well. Much too high value to leave unchecked. Mana Worm not what he's looking for, so it is probably just going to be a uh, Forgotten Torch and Ping turn here to try and uh, limit a bit of proceedings. but. Even after that, there is a Blood Mage, a two damage totem in bo on board, plus the uh, three damage Spirit Claws and the Tunnel Trog, which is going to get buffed by the Lightning Bolt. This is still right on the line here for Silent Storm. Yeah, he's got a weak top deck here. 
if he's unable to kind of finish BB Gun Gun off soon, BB Gun Gun's got a lot of action in his hand. Azerjake's going to cycle into a card. Mirror Images is a taunt, so he's got heal effectively with the taunt, and he's got card cycle to continue going. Silent Storm might fizzle out of damage, and BB Gun Gun's sort of weird value line to this matchup might pay off. It's a big call by that. That's another nine damage sat in yeah. his hand right here. I mean, fizzling out of damage seems a little bit unlikely. Uh, BB Gun Gun's going to need some huge draws for sure to shut this down. Well, I mean... Okay, that could work. Yeah, that it, is a theoretically huge draw, depending on what is inside the book at this point for BB Gun Gun. Yeah. Let's take a look, I guess. <laughs> is it the play this turn, though? Is the, the chances that a Cabalist Tome card is more useful than a top deck off Ezra Drake? I'm telling you, players that put this in their deck, they trust it. They just they jam it. it. They just jam it. That's how it works. Okay. Not great ones. You know, Pyroblast, not the, not the most effective removal spell in the world. Yeah, it doesn't get there. Mirror Entity is going to come down to try and fight for some board presence here, but just with the totems on the board, Silent Storm has a 50-50 chance of just spell damage totem. That makes the whole thing irrelevant. That means that his Spirit Claws is just back up to being 9 damage again, and he is right on the hill here, squaring up this series at two games to two. Yeah, is there anything that BB Gun Gun can top deck to really get him out of this mess? He's got the second Flame Waker still with some perfect Flame Waker RNG. Could he shut this down? I don't think so. I mean, you'd literally just need the four shots on the Azure Drake for a start, and even then, like you're still just facing down lethal from the the spell damage totem and the the the, the Spirit okay. Claws. So yeah, I just I, I don't see it. Uh, if he gets Arcane Blast off the Azure Drake, he can uh, potentially stabilize here. Fireball is not it. Would Arcane Blast have done it? Yeah, sure. He can blast yeah. down the, the Drake. Yeah, I guess so. No such luck, though. Silent Storm is going to square this series up. And uh, finally, the uh, the reign of terror of the aggressive decks is over. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll save you a mid-range shaman gets himself on the board. But yeah, as we... Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, don't know. I, I don't know where I was going with that, but... Um, as you saw, that, that game, it's just such a versatile deck. Even at the point where it looked like it was just completely out of gas, it just generates resources from no, nowhere. A one-mana weapon threatening lethal, you know, these innocuous totems being turned into actual attacking threats. It's just, it's value, it's tempo, it's like everything tied together in one. It's just such an oppressive class right now. Yeah, it's, it's so, so strong. And we saw BB Gun Gun try and shift his game plan kind of halfway through the match there. He was being the aggressor in the beginning, wasn't getting too much work done and then tried to transition to a value game plan against the Shaman, start using spot removal to pick things off, try and delay the game, force Silent Storm to kind of hold back his hand and slow down the game because of the flame strike threat. Right. But uh, it, he just can't outvalue Shaman. He just wasn't able to work out. He almost got there, yep. but Thunderbluff Valiant is so powerful. It really is, and I think yeah, the flame strike was was teased for a couple of turns, right? And eventually, it, it, the the, just, the dance didn't work out too well for BB Gun Gun in the end. He was forced to use it. Thunder Bluff was in play, and uh, again, we keep we keep coming to these venues when they're at their lowest point. Suddenly, as BB Gun Gun is on the losing train, the USA venue, the the Santa Ana California venue, is the one that we decide to show. So, uh, yeah. Both a, lot, a long way to go for both of these players, though, still looking to book that spot at the Hearthstone World Championship, uh, just joining an incredible lineup of players. But you, you'd have to say whichever of these players fights their way through this eight-man bracket that we've we've seen today, they've already established themselves right in the upper echelons, even of the quality of these 16 players that we have at BlizzCon. Oh, yeah. These players have been killing it. I would be happy to have either of them represent my region at BlizzCon. Yeah, and you're going to have one of them yeah. representing your <laughs> region, right? The stamp of approval from the 2014 World Champion. BB Gun Gun and Silent Storm, you are both Firebat approved at this point. Wow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have left? We have the Yogg Druid and the Tempo Mage, the, the, the low-curve Kabbalist Home Tempo Mage from BB Gun Gun up against the Tempo Mage and the Malagos Druid from mm -hmm. Silent Storm. So... 
the story here is, you know, similar decks remaining, but individual twists from both people. Um, Silent Storm has the tempo major that we kind of saw on one side of the bracket completely, where it's very minion heavy. Firelands Portal finishing off the curve, Ragnaros in there as well, and just the extra minions with Faceless Summoners and things like that, whereas BB Gun Gun has the cycle heavy, burn heavy, put torches in my decks, draw them out with uh, with card draw and kill you kind of plan. And then it's uh, it's just the, the Yogg Druid up against the Malagos Druid kind of thing. So it's it's... Similar classes, but very different philosophies on how they want to play those archetypes out. Yeah, very, very, very different, too. If we just look at the tempo mage lists, for example, you got on one hand the, the BB Gun Gun's tempo mage list, which kind of stops its high curve at Ezer Drake. And then if you look at Silent Storm's list, how many cards are, cost more than Ezer Drake? Well, there's Faceless Summoner 1, Faceless Summoner 2, Archmage Antonitis, Firelands Portal, Firelands Portal, Ragnaros. So six more cards, which is one-fifth of a Hearthstone deck that cost more than BB Gun Gun's highest costing cards. So it's so much slower, and that could really end up hurting Silent Storm in the long run. Do you think it will, though? Because interestingly enough, like in my experience in the, in the Tempo Mage mirror, they tend to cancel each other out for long periods of the game. They just okay. they, they just kind of like kill each other's stuff for a long period of time. And then the guy with the gas is going to be the, the guy that's able to make the like the third or fourth push towards the end of the game. Well, we saw the matchup actually played out a little bit earlier between two tempo mages, one with the torch list and one with the minion based list. And what sort of ended up happening is the minion based list in the later stages was developing Faceless Summoner, and that was great. And the other guy was <laughs> fireballing him in the that, face. That, that was great. Have a medal. Nice. <laughs> minion. Uh, yeah. yeah, and the other guy was just fireballing him in the face repeatedly, sure. and the guy that was getting fireballed died pretty quick. Fireballs will do that to you. Yeah, so yeah. I, I would have to favor the faster list in that matchup, even though there, there is some sort of situation, like I'm sure the slower list is going to try and force that sort of attrition game, yeah. and because they, they have an edge in the attrition game, and then the, the faster list, BB Gun Gun's list, he's going to be trying to not let that attrition game happen by trying to squeeze in points where he can, you know, ignore the opponent's minions and go face instead, because he doesn't have to worry about so much as removal punishing him for going face instead of trading. All right, so now that we've we've covered the battle of the mages, how are, how are the druids squaring up against each other? Like I said, very very different builds here. Silent Storm has the uh, the traditional Malagos druid, whereas. Uh, um, Silent Star, uh, BB Gun Gun, sorry, has a little a few extra twists in there as well. Yeah, BB Gun Gun has the Yogg Druid, and if we talk about Yogg Druid mirrors or Druid mirrors back in the pre-nerf Yogg, the most important card in the Druid mirror was Yogg's Run. And that's because... Wild that's Growth was pretty good, All right, too. all right, Wild Growth was pretty good. <laughs> aside from the obvious one, yeah, aside yeah, from yeah. Wild Growth Innervate, yeah. the Saran was the most important card in the Druid Mirror because you get these insurmountable tempo swings, and we saw players such as um, Noblord putting in the Death Wing to kind of simulate that effect of that giant tempo swing after an attrition game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, BB Gun Gun, instead of teching in the Death Wing, he was like, ah, Yogg's still pretty good. We're just going to keep going with that one. So uh, I think the Yogg Druid actually has a slight edge just because the tempo swing of Yogg is so powerful. Oh, baby. Sometimes Druid things just happen, and one player gets an insurmountable lead right from the outset yeah. here. And turn one, Fandral into turn two, Power of the Wild into turn three, Raven Idol, something is Even looking just potentially Tempo devastating. Mulch. Tempo Mulch on yeah, three could sure. be extremely powerful. And uh, you got to <laughs> imagine Silent Storm is not happy about this. We can't see his face, but you have to imagine he's upset because uh, this is a play that decides games, and this is why a lot of players have shown oh, some uh, this distaste towards Fandral. Because Sorry to, to cut you off, but this is going to be so painful. He's setting up Wrath Moonfire for himself yeah. on the next turn. And Power of the Wild is just going to crush that option out for him. Ugh. Does pick up his own wild growth here, but he needs a wild growth because he is staring at 31 manners worth of stuff in his opening hand right now. Yeah, he can't even afford to play it, though. He's under too much pressure because there's yeah. eight damage in play on turn three. Yeah, absolutely absurd. And as I said, BB Gun Gun, the hits keep coming here. He can even pick up another Power of the Wild here for, for more huge pressure. This is a, a free minion at this point. Yep. I mean, crack him, get him. <laughs> Armored Warhorse. Armored Warhorse, get him. Let's go. <laughs> Five to the face. Send it downtown. Gormak is also pretty He's good in it. a token deck. I mean... Mark, get him, right? In the yeah, there we go. Yeah. It's a beast, too. It, it's got synergy. What? The Armored Warhorse. Oh, yeah. I mean, he has the two mana this turn. Like, is, is he just going to... Oh. I would just jam it on the, oh, sure, the sure, Fandral sure. right now and just get in there. Sure, sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, now it's a boulder fist banjo. <laughs> hey, weren't we having this situation that I wanted to see more boulder fist ogres? Did yeah. we not have that conversation yeah, that, at one point? That was a conversation, and there's a boulder fist ogre. There you go. It just also allows you to choose everything. There you go. Wild Growth, he's going to make some sort of desperate ploy here to maybe find his way to a Ragnaros, yeah. draw the Innovate next turn, find some way of dealing with this, but there could potentially just be another 11 connecting with his face that turn. All right. Nope. <laughs> so that, is, that is a definitive joust. Mm -hmm. Innervate, Rag, win a 1-3 and three to try and maybe stabilize, then get the tempo swung back by Mulch. Swipe? I mean... He can kill it. He can. <laughs> it involves face tanking another six, and there's still a 5-3 on the board. Oh, my gosh. Doesn't look pretty. Yeah. Yeah, Fandral plus Innervate is just disgusting. Disgusting. It's, it, it really is, and... He needs a mulch or something if he really wants to catch back up. You do. You do genuinely sound like like a like a fundamentalist mother talking about rap music when you say that word. By the way, like, it's just disgusting. It. That's how I feel. That's <laughs> so I, that. That is how I feel. That describes it. Good. All right. In that in that case, you are you're getting the message across perfectly. Good. Oh man. So that's going to be another six coming into the face. Azure Drake developed, allowing him to you know keep his hand fresh. I mean, some healing. Yeah, Moonglide pulled stalls proceedings for Indeed. now. It can push him back up to 14, but it's just 10 on the board. Basically, any draw here from BB Gun Gun. Hey, Sideshow Spell here just wanted to come out to play again one more time this tournament. Living Roots is three more plus the hero power. That'll do it. Yeah, that is lethal. BB Gun Gun just uh, counting it once, counting it twice, making sure that it is lethal and uh, going in for it. Yeah, I mean, could have even BM'd Nourished if you wanted to. <laughs> Just it's, to really rub it in. Yeah, it's the kind of game where you do need to assert your dominance, make it clear that you were just the better player that game by BMing at the end, but not too much high-level analysis going to go into that one. Sometimes the Druid Mirror is just ludicrously snowbally like that. One of the players got a, a huge Mana Spike start, the other guy didn't. That Mana Spike was uh, combined with the disgusting, disgraceful Fandral Stag Helm. Well, Fandral's cool, mm -hmm. but when combined with Innervate, Fandral is suddenly uncool. Fandral is just not 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 okay in my book when comboed with Innervate. But but Fandral by itself, one of the coolest cards in the game for sure. So very quickly, in a word, is the problem Innervate or is the problem Fandral? I, I, I can't answer this in one word. Okay. You're putting me, I don't want to get quoted forever <laughs> on my one word answer to this. <laughs> All right. I tried. That was just entrapment, I guess. But we'll, we'll give Fire that some more time to think of an eloquent answer. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, guys. This is the America's Last Call Invitational. BB Gun Gun is on the verge of completing our Hearthstone World Championship lineup for 2016. He just needs to pick up a win with his Tempo Mage. But before before we went to the break, we were, we were having a very stimulating discussion, sure. something that I want an answer to. So now that we have time at length, okay. in Innovate Fandral, what's the problem? I think the problem leans more towards Innervate, but is not completely Innervate. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna try and be real vague about it. All right. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just, I'm just not gonna get anything definitive yeah, out of you. Yeah. No, no, there's this many people watching. Yeah. Every, everyone's firing up Reddit, hands at the ready, <laughs> just waiting for you to put your foot in it. It's just not happening. No. no. All right, I'll quit trying. So back to the game. Tempo Mage from BB Gun Gun is the deck left to win with, and he has Tempo Mage up against a the, the Druid and the Tempo Mage Mirror. The Tempo Mage Mirror we talked about at length. Mm -hmm. Now, classically mid-range style druid decks they just got beat up by tempo mages sure. they got absolutely farmed like how much if any has that dynamic changed with the new form of druids it's changed a little bit because the druid doesn't develop onto the board it doesn't play like big stat minions a lot of the time and rely right. on them sticking in the early turns like you won't see them play druid of the claw anymore sure. and since these kind of exploitable minion developments don't happen the tempo mage isn't able to get huge value out of something like arcane blast or Frostbolt or Flame Waker combos to get removal spells, but we're not even worried about the Druid yet. The task at hand right now for Silent Storm is Ooh. getting a ma win with the Mage first. Ooh. Oh, that That's, is not pretty. That is three out of the six highest cost cards in his entire deck. 
But the, the good news is BB Gun Gun's hand's not so hot either. So neither of them doing too much in the beginning, just a, a few pings and passes. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Silent Storm's going to need a, a lot of good top decks to curve his way out of this one. But yeah, BB Gun Gun, another ping pass, it looks like. Yeah, and this is kind of what I was talking about in my experience in the, in the mirror. It's like there are a lot of draws where, you know, Tempo Mage, unless it gets the explosive Mana Worm start, a lot of the time it wants to spend its early turns removing the stuff that you play. They have a lot of cards in their deck that enable them to do that. When both decks have that kind of draw, where they have nothing really to develop and a lot of things to remove, suddenly this stalemate situation appears. Then you can get towards the mid-game period where Silent Storm's deck just has a lot more okay. things to do. But, as you so eloquently put it, by that point, BB Gun Gun could just be hurling fireballs downtown. So We'll have to see. We'll we will see. see. I, but yeah, I do agree with you that this position so far is how the game has developed is uh, favoring Silent Storm. If oh. He definitely wants the draws to go th this way for BB Gun Gun when his draws go this way. Right. And uh, Ragnaros being picked up as well. So yeah, he is already set for the late game. He just yeah. does not have to draw another late game card again for the rest of this game. It's just he's getting there in such a pedestrian fashion right now that the BB Gun Gun still has a window to be able to go, but there you go. Told you, turn five, it happens every time. <laughs> <laughs> they just love it. And there's the Shatter as well. Does uh, not wow. have, uh, does have the Frostbolt to combine with it so far at the moment. So could see that as a potential answer to one of these huge threats in hand from Silent Storm at some point. Yeah, he drew six out of eight of the highest costing cards in his entire deck. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> But now, now it's time to just you keep stop bomb chaining your opponent yeah. and just seeing if they have an answer to all this stuff. Yeah, and BB Gun Gun hasn't really mounted any amount of damage, so uh, yeah, he's the one reacting. And if he tries to go for any sort of value game plan here, hoping that maybe some of those cards in Silent Storm's hand were burned, there is no way his deck is ever going to outvalue this hand of Silent Storm. It is just how much mana is that? That is. A lot of mana worth of the, yeah, worth of the creatures. You, you, like, do, you do you, buddy. Yeah, you have to Holy smoke. Yeah. Now, Firelands Portal is even picked up, so just even more high value cards. So, BB Gun Gun really needs to identify here that he can't outvalue this and needs to set up tempo lines of play where he's able to get through face damage. Yep, and he uh, he chose to just use his Frostbolt on the previous turn, which now has turned one of the cards in his hand into an absolute brick at this point. Uh, with the Shatter. Now, for the first time, Sunstorm actually picks up one of his high-tempo cards in the Flame Waker. But at this point, the, the game has, has potentially just passed that by, and we'll probably just see him continue to develop huge threats here. Yeah, potentially a Firelands Portal. Ezra Drake Ping comes to mind as a good play. Faceless Summoner Coin Ping looks I'm pretty appealing. Uh, other than that... Yeah, I don't mind. Like, Faceless Summoner Coin Ping seems reasonable because you kind of want to get this mirror image problem dealt with before you are committed into dropping Ragnaros on the board. So getting the two minions down, giving yourself the two attacks that you can ration out and potentially curb into Ragnaros later definitely looks appealing to me. But he goes with the Drake line, preserves his coin. Of course, the coin has very real value to him, having now drawn that Flame Waker as well. So And the Archmage Antonidas in his hand. So preserving that option for himself definitely makes a lot of sense as well. Yeah, and here goes BB Gun Gun just cycling for his deck, trying to find that burn damage that he can start utilizing to get racing. He has quite a bit of damage, but not nearly enough. And, uh, removing minions, getting through chip damage. That's the that's the game plan of the deck. Right. Sure is, and uh, Arcane Missiles does take care of the Drake now, so this is probably going to have to be a reactive turn here for Silent Storm. You never really want to leave a Sorcerer's Apprentice up unchecked, so... Uh, potential Flame Waker turn now, now that he's drawn the Mana Worm as well, that, that potentially increases the uh, the swinginess of his turn as well. So Frostbolt can be used here, Coin can I be like used it. here, but he's just going to go for the Antonidas play. Antonidas he's gonna, Coin Frostbolt. Yeah, he's just going to try and turn the aggressive switch, not hang around for BB Gun Gun to be the guy to start hurling fireballs downtown. He wants to sling some fireballs with his own fireball. Yeah, the reason why I really, really, really like this play uh -huh. is now he's got uh, 24 damage in his hand, right? He sure does, yeah. <laughs> or uh, 18 plus 5, one more fireball, and uh, he'll be there. Yeah, 23 in hand, plus some pings over time. You just can just start doing freeze mage maths at this point, honestly. If, you know, how many turns do I have, and, and how long does it take me to push this through? And suddenly that absolutely dead brick shatter in his hand right now is, is something that he wishes he could pair with a frostbolt. 
and he's just going to try and go through this the hard way with Flame Waker shots. Arcane Blast does have a guaranteed clear on it now. It's like he's going to think about using the second one here to preserve his Sorcerer's Apprentice in play. Oh, of course, it was played this turn anyway. It can't attack. Yeah. My apologies. And BB Gun Gun is off to the races. He realizes Silent Storm has too much value in his hand to really contest. He needs to kill him before all of those fireballs get slung at his face, and he's doing quite a good job of it. Yeah, and that is a Spellbender in play. So the first option that Silent Storm tries to use here to take care of either of these minions is going to get neutralized by the secret picked up from the Cabalist Tome. So he needs to consider things like Counterspell, like Mirror, in, uh, Mirror Entity, sorry, Spellbender as well. He knows that there are no secrets in the deck, so this is a Cabalist Tome card. So he has to consider all of those options and find the play that relieves the most pressure here. If he, if he was to go for the Firelands portal here, that would be absolutely devastating. Yeah, Firelands portal is really risky because you run the chance of potentially a counter spell coming out and spellbender, so you play into a lot of things. So we see him go here with the Mana Worm first to try and help himself play around Mirror Entity. And then he goes with the Mirror Images to try and play around counter spell. And the spellbender does end up potentially leaving, uh, or yeah, definitely leaving up the Flame Waker, so. And so that was a very strong play here from BB Gun Gun. Second Flame Waker picked up, but as you can see, shatter one of those annoying cards that you cannot even cast for no value if the if it's not met. But that is just a Pyroblast. He's that's, at 29. That's going to be it. You can just fireball the face. Yeah, you can just fireball the face and win, or I would say Pyroblast the face sure. this turn. Fireball next turn in case Counterspell comes up off book. Excellent point. Yep. Yeah, so I, I, I would really like to see BB Gun Gun just launch the pyro blast he's gonna do it i think like from his perspective doing it this way around this gives him maximum chance of being able to address the boarding it, sure. if there's some absolute miracle world where he dies to flame waker mana worm being on board from 29 <laughs> then you know, this, this okay. allows him to address the situation i'm not sure that world exists but at this point blizzcon on the line trip to the world championship on the line at this point is just find a way that you lose and play around it bb gun gun has set himself up for the Pyroblast lethal. I don't see anything here from Silent Storm. I see you over there frantically yeah. counting Fireball. What's I, going on? I was on? counting for Fireball, Fireball, Frostbolt with the Flame Waker and the Mana Worm right. on the board if all of it went face and it's one off. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorcerer's Apprentice is going to come out here. Silent Storm doesn't know what's up. He's going to try and find the best line here to keep himself alive. He can definitely beat what he can see right now, but He's going to have that terrible sinking feeling in his gut right now that something is up with BB Gun Gun's hand and that his road to BlizzCon is going to stop short. His 2016 grind is over. But for BB Gun Gun, sealed with a pyroblast of all things, BB Gun Gun throws out the emote, pyroblast to face, ends the series. BB Gun Gun completes our BlizzCon lineup. Fireback, great performance from yeah. him this tournament. Yeah, really, really amazing format and really uh, weird decklist that he brought that just yeah. worked so well. We can see, you know, how much faster his Temple Mage list was than all the other competitors. How he ran loot hoarders, which no one in the current meta runs, and how he has like just Flame Strike at the top end instead of running Firelands Portal. These sort of changes, and we saw him consistently able to win Temple Mage mirrors by just fireballing his opponent in the face, dealing more damage than they could deal faster. He just doesn't play Cult Sorcerer. That's something that's just leapt out to me. That's oh, yeah. is just not in he the deck. He just has loot orders instead to try and increase the odds right. of finding that burn. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a cool decklist design and all these weird things. He cuts essential cards from decklists and makes it work. And you can you can kind of see why he's considered you know such a bastion in the in the community, the leader of his practice group, a huge practice group. Like the mm -hmm. scale of this thing is massive. There's so many players in there, and this is the guy that they all look up to. This is the guy that they all go to for deck list advice, for tournament strategy advice, for all this kind of things. And now, now you see why because yeah. the man's managed to step out of the the shadows of his of his deep dark land and, and exposed himself as the fantastic player that he is. Booked his own spot to BlizzCon. Yeah, really, really incredible. Almost every single one of his deck lists has weird off-the-wall non-meta text in them, and they all worked. And it's, it's the sign of a great read on the tournament meta itself, right? It's, it's a plan coming together. It's a plan that worked perfectly for him. But let's take a moment to, to give a shout-out to Silent Storm, who had a great performance yeah. this tournament himself. And 
you cannot help but feel for all of the guys in these last call events. You know, all eight players that have made it here and then had to play in the single elimination bracket, potentially to go home with nothing, but particularly for the guys that reach the finals and just get so close yeah. and fall that just that one rung short on the ladder to BlizzCon and just have to, you know, go home and say, all right, I mean, I came close, but what do I have to show for it? I just have to try again in 2017. Yeah, it feels bad for Silent Storm, but at least he was able to take out the only priest in the tournament, so he will forever yeah. be known. The Priest Slayer Silent Storm. And yeah, big hats off to all of these players. Grinded out so many points, got so far. You know, we had Muzzy versus Knoblord game one. Knoblord was able to get to the semifinals, but it inevitably stopped by BB Gun and rest of the bracket. Really just great performance all around for these players. Yeah, absolutely. So, and yeah, aside from the finals that we've just watched, which is, of course, fresh in our mind, are there any other standout games, standout players who didn't perhaps didn't make it through to the finals that you want to give a shout out to that have impressed you? Uh, well, definitely shout out to Frozen, having yeah. the balls, the, the big cojones to bring the priest, bring the paladin, bring the off the wall, all in counter lineup and put it all in the line, even though inevitably lost to the warrior that he was targeting you, you still got to pay respect to people that try really crazy things yeah i'm not sure we'll see anything like that lineup again in in conquest strategy from frozen so yeah a shout out to him huge commiserations for silent storm huge congratulations to bb gun gun and standing by to give him that that big congratulations is the man himself it's frodan we have all 16 players decided for the Hearthstone World Championship in 2016. And the last, certainly not the least, is the man of the moment, BB Gun Gun, who is joining me on the line for a quick interview just on his qualification. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, awesome. So how, how are you feeling right now? Looks like you were pretty stressed throughout the event. You made it. You're going to BlizzCon. What's going through your head, Ryan? Yeah, I'm a little bit exhausted. Uh, made some arrows in the last match, but uh, I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I don't think it's a coincidence that people who've been practicing with you guys, everyone from the QQ group, are also in the ones making it really far in. So it feels like it was a group effort, no? Yeah, it's kind of a group effort. Uh, me, Neil Benetti, and Samsung, we are all in the same QQ group, and we made it, uh, made it to the top three. I think it's awesome. The only bad news is Frozen lost to Silent Storm in the first round. <laughs> the yeah. yeah, it's okay. Well, I mean, not everyone can uh, be a tournament winner, and I guess uh, Frozen at least won some fans bringing that priest deck. I think a lot yeah. of people also credit you throughout tournaments. They keep saying that they thank you whenever they win very hard matches or they win the tournament. They always say that you help them prepare. Is that really true? Are you the one going to them and helping prepare their deck list? How, how do you actually coach these guys? Uh, we just, uh, it's not like a single one-to-one -one coach. It's always as a talking group. And uh, I play a lot of tournaments, so I usually come up with an idea of uh, the architect of the lab, so, and they just make some changes to it. So it's a group effort, it's not just me. Well, that's really humble of you to say. I think a lot of people always point at Coach B for some advice. Uh, why don't you go ahead and talk about your decks and why you brought the specific lineup to this tournament. You, de you definitely had a lot of weird choices that even we were confused, but it seemed to work out. So uh, can you just talk a little bit about specifically what you were preparing for this tournament and why you brought the decks? Uh, yeah, first of all, if you want to bring one deck, you want the deck to improve your average win rate. So, uh, Control Warrior doesn't do that. Uh, Control Warrior is, is either get banned or get countered. Uh, it's a really weird deck. Uh, so, I just don't want to bring Control Warrior. Now, I bring, uh, so I brought a lot of aggressive decks. Um, and also, my first opponent is Nostan, which his uh, favorites of uh, playing those uh, kind of uh, uh, tempo decks, so I just uh, want to play all the aggressive decks to like have a better matchup uh, against him, and it works pretty well. And uh, I think m most people may be uh, confused about my tempo mage. I think Th this uh, that that list is actually from China, and uh, some some guy just uh, won one big tournament uh, using that. I think uh, his name is uh, Omega Zero. Uh, I basically copied uh, his uh, lab and made some uh, a few changes. Yeah.
Yeah. So I've... Omega Zero also made to the BlizzCon. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I've heard the legend of Omega Zero, him being the true ladder god of China, uh, finally being able to have yeah. some tournament results as well. That's cool, man, seeing that China is being able to influence the West. And I think a lot of people don't know the power of the Chinese scene nearly as much, but certainly you guys are putting them on the map. And the last question, I, of course, I want to ask is now it's your turn to thank other people who have maybe helped you prepare and succeed. Yeah, so right. Why don't yeah. you have a chance to thank those people who have helped you get to this point? Uh, I really want to thank my Q group. Uh, they gave me a lot of advice, uh, like uh, Edward, Eric, uh, and also New Ability, Frozen, all those guys. They prepare, uh, practice with me, uh, and they give me uh, a lot of advice on my deck choices. So it's really helpful yeah wow fantastic and all those names sound familiar because we've seen them either here in this tournament or at a championship for hearthstone championship tour thanks so much and congratulations we'll see you at blizzcon thank you so there's just a few words from bb gun gun did you guys know that he's also a large contributor to the meta snapshot that you guys read on a weekly basis and also get some inspiration on how to handle the latter meta so it's not a surprise that this guy has been largely impacting a lot of the community content and maybe even the decks you face on ladder so big congratulations once again to bb gun gun and the rest of the qq group who feel like they've had a great successful year and what a year it's been 2016 is coming to a close leading up to the hearthstone world Championship. Championship. What did you guys think? Let us know on social media by hashtagging HCT and tweeting at us at Play Hearthstone or on Facebook.com slash Hearthstone where we'll be posting some of the replays as well as some of the highlights of those matches. A big congratulations to BB Gun Gun and everyone else who's joining us. We're going to begin BlizzCon with opening weekend starting on October 26th here on Twitch.tv slash Play Hearthstone. That's it from us. Thanks so much for watching. From Frodan, the rest of the casters, and everyone here at the production crew, it's been a wonderful journey. We'll see you at the end of the month for BlizzCon opening weekend.